nine, eight, seven, six, five, three, two, one, zero, and... Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest physicists during a video presentation of Tencent Web Summit in Beijing, he gave the humanity species less than 600 years before we'll need to leave Earth. He says in a quote, We are running out of space and the only places to go to are other worlds. This creates a lot of discussion on why colonization of is inevitable. Though, the actual timeline isn't clear, but here is what we know. My name is Wesley and welcome to Rato Tech. If you like tech videos, how to guides, and want to understand the future of tech, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell for weekly videos. As usual, I will give food for thought at the end of the video, so make sure to watch to the end. To understand this, let's first explain what does it mean by human colonization of space. Well, in simple terms, this means space settlement. And in a nutshell, this is a political concept of space advocacy for permanent human habitation and exploitation of natural resources outside the planet Earth. This brings us to our second question, who are the pioneers of space settlement? As compared to the initial times, where space exploration was a rivalry between superpowers, all this has shifted so fast to a different courtyard and today it's a billionaire's stuff. All who have different concepts and approaches to space colonization. Speaking of colonization, four names automatically come up to our minds. One, South African, Canadian, American billionaire Elon Musk behind SpaceX and a project to colonize Mars. American billionaire Jeff. We have British billionaire Richard Branson behind Virgin and Space tourism at low costs and intercontinental suborbital transits and finally we have russian billionaire yuri milna backing up the breakthrough to starshot project for interstellar power elon musk has an objective to make mass habitable for human life when asked why is he escaping from earth there are so many things on Earth that need urgent attention. Why, why would you have this escape trip off to another planet? You decided to build a space company. Why on Earth would someone do that? This feels like a distraction. You're, you're, you shouldn't be thinking about this. You should be solving what's, what's here and now. 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969, then the space shuttle retired and the United States could take no one to orbit. So that's the trend. The trend is like, down to nothing. Because pitch and range. I'm mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it, it will, I think, it by itself degrade, actually. Mm -hmm. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they're able to make the pyramids, and they forgot how to do that. Mm. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. I, I, really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space ring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets. And I think that's really exciting. And compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until at some eventual extinction event. Um, but I want to be clear. I, like, I'm not trying to be anyone's savior. Uh, that is not the... I, I'm just trying to... Think about the future and not be sad. In a recent interview, he says it will take a thousand spaceships and a million tons of vitamin C to make life on Mars sustainable. Otherwise, you are going to die slowly and painfully. That's because to live on Mars, we need to have a self-sustaining city. Elon believes that to preserve humanity advancement, it is necessary to have a backup, and the backup is Mars. Through SpaceX, currently a transportation system to space, Musk believes that by creating reusable starships, it will be possible, possible to launch three times a day at an average. For Elon, he wants to use resources from Earth to make life possible in Mars. Well, 
here is where the difference starts to come in between SpaceX and Blue Origin. On the other hand, Jeff Bezos believes that there are unlimited amount of resources on the moon and once New Shepard jet is ready and lands on the moon, this will open a great opportunity to utilize resources from the moon to make possible creation of O'Neill cylinders, to build a huge space colonies and eventually have a trillion people living and working in mass. Here's what he says on O'Neill cylinders. We get to choose. Do we want stasis and rationing? Or do we want dynamism and growth? So, instead, what O'Neill and his students came up with was the idea of manufactured worlds rotated to create artificial gravity with centrifugal force. These are very large structures, miles on end, and they hold a million people or more each. Musk plans to send a SpaceX rocket to Mars with cargo only by 2022, according to the SpaceX website. A second mission which will carry more cargo and crew is targeted for 2024. Musk also said he'll send a million people to Mars by 2050. The two billionaires seem to have very different objectives, but there are some similarities irrespective of the rivalry between the two companies. Two grandiose dreams are markedly different and their owners occasionally spar about their details. But it is inconvincible that these two companies will one day work together in space. Here is what Musk and Bezos have said of their ambitions, visions, and how they are different yet also surprisingly similar. We get to preserve this unique gem of a planet which is completely irreplaceable. There is no plan B. We have to save this planet, and we shouldn't give up a future for our grandchildren's grandchildren of dynamism and growth. We can have both. Who is going to do this work? Not me. These kids in the front rows, you guys are going to do this, and your children are going to do this. This is going to take a long time. This is a big vision. And what you're going to do is you're going to build whole industries. There are going to be thousands of future companies doing this work. A whole ecosystem of entrepreneurial activity, unleashed, creative people coming up with new ideas about how to use space. But those companies, those entrepreneurial companies, cannot exist today. It's impossible. And the reason is the price of admission to do interesting things in space right now is just too high. You're 47. What is the likelihood that you personally will go to Mars? 70%. We've recently made a number of breakthroughs that, I, that I'm just really fired up about. And when does that happen? In our lifetimes? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about moving there. So it's like, so if it, it, you can get the price per ticket maybe around a couple hundred thousand dollars. This could be an escape hatch for rich people. No. Your probability of dying on Mars is much higher than Earth. Really, the Africa on Mars would be like Shackleton's Africa going to the Antarctic. It's going to be hard. Uh, there's a good chance of death. Going in a little can through deep space. You might land successfully. Once you land successfully, there will be a mat. You'll be working nonstop to build the base. Uh, so you're, you're not, not much time for leisure. And uh, once you get there, even after doing all this, uh, this is a very harsh environment. So there's a good chance you die there. Um, we think you can come back, but we're not sure. Now, does that sound like an escape hatch for rich people? And yet you would unhesitatingly go. You know, there's lots of people like climb mountains. You know why they climb mountains? Because people die on Mount Everest all the time. They like doing it for the challenge. One, both understand to get to space is a long way and it's very expensive. Therefore, they all are working on reusable boosters to, to cut the cost. Just as the US and Russia, among other nations, have learned to work together to pull off major feats such as construction and maintenance of Space International Station, it is unreasonable to think that SpaceX and Blue Origin may one day cooperate to achieve the impossible. Finally, our last question, and I call it Hawkins Doomsday. 
a major concern of Hawkins and others is that climate change is already causing rapid sea level rise. It is impossible that if the progression is not diminished by a cut in emissions, a significant percentage of what is currently land will be underwater. This is of course in addition to the other life-threatening effects of climate change. Additionally, as this continues, population are set to continue increasing. This will have disastrous consequences. Hawkins is confident that within the next few hundred years, Earth will no longer be habitable option for humans. Here is a bonus tip. With billionaires joining the race to colonize space, what is the end goal here? SpaceX is a commercial transport system, meaning they are in business. For starters, Elon said a round ticket to Mars will cost a single person anywhere between $100,000 to $500,000. He continues to say the price will be low enough that most people in advanced economies will sell their homes on Earth to move Mars if they want. Well, this is the food for thought. What will happen eventually if Hawkins doomsday arrive? Will Mars be the planet for the rich or will it accommodate all of us? Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. See you around.